<laughs> hey, guys, would you mind if we reintroduce ourselves since I'm all over the place right now? <laughs> <laughs> Please. Okay, number one, number one, I do not believe you're all over the place, but number two, I don't care. Sure. <laughs> okay, so hi, everybody. Welcome. This is Elsie Michaels and Sidekick. And- Angela Estes. I got to get this intro Sorry, down. It's, I'm it's nice McMahon. to meet both. It's nice to meet both of you. It's a new year. I, Thanks, first, Henry. Time, uh, first time this year I've uh, connected. So yeah, and we're so glad you're here. I speak for Angie because uh, apparently she has no voice. I do too. Can you hear me? You hello, have a hello, hello. Just I kidding. hear you even when you're not talking. So it's it's. Uh, I hear you all. You guys are- <laughs> Angie, you actually I can't got me out of bed on New Year's Day, uh, it, and I was even up when Elsie sent me a reminder at uh, eight this morning. So it's a miracle. Well, thank oh, you, yeah. miracle. First miracle. Yay. We and we were um, at our friend's house down the, you know, two doors down, so we didn't have to drive anywhere last night, which was great. Cool. Uh, got to bed a little after midnight, and here I am. Um. Or, Facsimile is here. We still need for you to introduce yourself too. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Who are you, Henry? Well, Welcome who am I? Guest. I'm uh, I'm Henry Kahn. I'm uh, a uh, semi-retired physician going to a transition from being a doctor to being a coach. And uh, whoever is watching, thank you. And this is a pretty amazing experience. Yay! Yay. Yay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> now, so in, in case this gets hard at any point, <laughs> I, I, I brought something for, you know, will this show this? Here you go. <laughs> in case it gets really, really rough here, we've got, we've got, <laughs> we've got the hair of the dog, except I wasn't drinking last night. I went and watched a rocket. <laughs> well, that's cool. You actually watched a rocket? Yeah, a tiny one. It's it's on my um next ninety nine and it's on my blog. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I don't know what I'm doing today. Hi, Elsie. Hey guys. <laughs> we were we were this, hey, this listen to around. I think it was on the ceiling. It looked like an eyeball. It was really, <laughs> but it wasn't attached to anything. <laughs> Okay, well, let's all introduce ourselves. <laughs> Hi, my name is... Wait. <laughs> it's nine in the morning on New Year's Day. <laughs> all right. Okay. So anyway, this is um, Henry Kahn, doctor. Thank you so much for being a guest here. Um, we'd love to know what you're passionate about. What am I passionate about? Well, that's that's a really really good question. Uh, I guess I guess I'll put it this way: my um, my career was pretty amazing. I was a primary care doctor. Spent uh, most of my time at the University of California, San Francisco, um, and I chose primary care as a uh, as a profession and uh, for uh, for a number of reasons. Um, but what I found was uh, that that when I reflect on my best patient care stories, there was something going on with them that I had uh, I didn't realize what was going on at the, at, at the as they unfolded. But a lot of it was just that I wasn't the one who was healing them. They often came to me as the healer of last resort because they had been to all the specialists, they had kind of seen lots of doctors. No one had a clue what to do. And now they're back in my office saying, well, what can you do for me, Dr. Kahn? And uh, sometimes it was really kind of scary. So it wasn't always a positive ego boost. It was in many, it was more of an, oh, my God, experience. Here they are. And they wanted to help them. And they to <laughs> That's so funny. Poor Henry. What are we laughing at now? <laughs> Well, are you, Henry, do you see Elsie? <laughs> no, no, El- Elsie is really, <laughs> Elsie is wonderful because, you know, for a while she was there and on. 
I, my while I saw that what was probably a lamp on the ceiling, but it looked like an eyeball. <laughs> Oh, I, I don't hear me. <laughs> I can hear you, but I, okay. can't, I can't see you. I'm just not funny. scoring well. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's funny because, yeah, you had the most beautiful image. You were like on your patio. You had an umbrella. It was beautiful. And no sooner do I think that was beautiful and I hit three applauses. And it was like I did it. It was like the third applause and she goes, bleep. <laughs> <laughs> but what's funny is I was trying to applaud you and it wouldn't work. And as soon as I hit it, I went black. Oh, oh. I know why. 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 I did that. Um, you were on your iPad, right? Uh-huh. Do you have your cover on your iPad? Yes. It, it flipped the camera and it was shooting your cover. Really? I took the, yes, I took the cover off my iPad. So when I did it, oh. watch. I'll try to do it with Henry, and it'll flip my screen, and you'll see across my room. Whoa! There you go. Yeah. That's nice. crazy. And, okay. And, oh my gosh. So you were Stop fine. It. Go back to your iPad. Okay. <laughs> the iPad had it. iPad had to <clears throat> take cover off. We okay. got this, Henry. Uh, yeah, I've got very good. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, take note of that. Whoever is on Blap. Okay. So that little those tips. Two, I'll put it in my tips tomorrow too. <laughs> okay. So the two little hands at the corner of this uh, picture means that if I click that, I'm applauding you. Right. That applause is. <clears throat> um. But but there's there's quirkiness if you're on an iPad and there's more than two people. Ah. Uh, okay. Because because it's putting your applause right where iPad puts flip camera. I see. <laughs> uh, I, I, light happening. Elsie, Elsie has gone from dark to light. Hey, 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 Elsie! I have a request. <laughs> Hello. 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 <laughs> hey, it's a Santa. Santa Claus. <laughs> but Elsie, the screen from here. Tap, tap it, tap it, tap this, tap. Probably Henry. Whoever's the third person, tap their applause. <laughs> okay, I'm going to tap my applause. All right. Wait, my applause or your applause? Whose applause am I tapping? There we go. There she is. Hey, 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 Elsie, I have yes. a request. Yes. Um, my request is you're going to edit a bunch of this out, <laughs> but I want, I want the parts that you edit out, at least the sound. When you were moving around, there were some brilliant sound effects. I could use those. <laughs> Absolutely can. I love and collect sound effects. Oh my gosh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you will eventually hear it probably on one of my videos. <laughs> wow. Okay, so do so do we take this again from um 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 introductions or do we get Henry? <laughs> make, <laughs> like is this is this recording, guys? Am I recording this? Can you tell? It says you are. Yes, it oh says, good, okay. It says you're recording. Very good. Hi, everybody. This is Elsie Michaels with Fabulous Playground of Love, Joy, Life. And this is Angela Estes of Angie C's Cheerleader of Life. And this is our guest, Henry Kahn. Hi, everyone. Happy New Year. Hi, Henry. For uh, tuning in this morning. I have no idea why people would get up at <laughs> nine in the morning to uh, do anything other than stay in bed and sleep a little bit, but uh, I'm honored. We're eager to get 2016 started. I'm well, speaking for everyone because nobody has a voice. <laughs> it's all me. <laughs> Let me speak for you. I know why you're up. <laughs> okay. Yep, well, why, did, why does she keep thinking we don't have a voice? Um, go ahead. <laughs> I'm, being, I'm being a mom. Oh, my gosh. Uh, but see, what a great lesson. Mom, <laughs> shut up. Mom. Let everyone <laughs> be who they are. Sorry, everybody. Thank you. That's a, that's a, No worries. That, <laughs> no, this is... I, Hi, Randy. Hi, Randy. <laughs> this is one of uh, my commitments in 2016, actually. And uh, this bracelet, I got at Conscious Parenting. It's a little anchor. And I thought, oh, how cute. It's like about, you know, boats. But no, it's about anchoring your commitment and see love. Um, my commitment is just to stay conscious and not just to stay conscious, to stay as conscious as I can, to let 
everyone have their own voice. And I'm just getting it all out before I continue that commitment. I know how you're feeling right now. Would you like to know? Yes. You're all really grateful for being here. Yay! <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> okay, I'm done now. <laughs> Gratitude is what I discovered when I think back on those best patient care stories I'm talking about, that, that there was a lot of gratitude um, in, in those stories, and uh, both from my side and their side. And honestly, I wasn't the person healing them. I was starting to say before when the technology started going wonky and I was seeing the inside of your the block <laughs> on your iPad uh, that it, the, the people would come back to me after they'd oh. this. <laughs> I have a question. Yes, question. Uh, why? What made you come to the conclusion that you weren't the one healing them, that it had to be something they were doing? Why? Uh, that, that, is, that is a really good question, and it came from a purely intuitive place. Okay. It, from a, it, it, it started with listening to them because, uh, you know, it meant I, I didn't have the special surgical technique or the knowledge of the new latest drug that might cure whatever they've had because they'd already seen the specialist who had all those skills, better. Um, it was more some deep intuitive thing. I would connect maybe to something that they had told me when I first met, met the patient. Uh, they would give me some clues. Or if I didn't have clues, I'd ask some questions and find out that they had lots of inner strengths already. They were just looking for an answer outside of themselves. Mm -hmm. and, right. and then frustration they were there in my office and my re initial reaction was, Oh my God, the, you know, this person has already been to the top specialist. What, what am I supposed to do? Uh, but then this intuition kicked in as, um, you know, just started asking questions and nudged them in a direction that they already knew they wanted to go. And I, um, I can give you one really quick example one of the patients that, that was most dramatic, the um, woman are in her late twenties who came to see me. Uh, and this was a time when primary care uh, doctors were meant to be the gatekeepers in HMOs. Uh, so that, uh, you know, if they wanted to see a specialist or get some extra help, they had to see me first. So I said, hi, I'm Dr. Khan. What brings you in today? Patient answers. I'm suicidal and I need to be hospitalized. So I said, oh, okay, um, let me call this, the, the nurse who is responsible for doing that and uh, get that going. And so while we're waiting for the nurse to come over to the clinic, I asked her, so what's been going on? She said, well, I've had this lifelong struggle with depression for as long as I can remember. And I've been on uh, meds and treatment and seen psychotherapists and psychologists and psychiatrists all my life. And I've you know, maybe get a little bit of help here and there, but nothing has ever sustained or made this go away. And my latest psychiatrist had this idea that I must have had some sort of abuse in my childhood. Um, but um, you know, honestly, Doctor Khan, I, I, um, I can actually I have a really good memory starting with maybe around age four, and I can remember everybody in my childhood. I can remember friends, neighbors family, loved ones, strangers, and honestly, I cannot come up with a, with a, with a story. So I... Uh, Andrew? Yeah. At, <clears throat> at some point, I have a question I want to ask about that particular phenomena, if you want to um, have a little bit of dialogue about it, because um, I have a little bit of personal experience on it and a little bit of observational experience on it and so I've come to a conclusion why people don't necessarily remember their abuse go Henry <laughs> and, she, and and that, that's great you said that because I was about to get to the part of the story where she said well you know I acknowledge that maybe there was something hidden and the reason why I can't bring it up is it's so traumatic I just can't bring it up I accept that but my psychiatrist kept getting more and more frustrated with me because I couldn't come up with it. And finally he said, um, he said nothing. <laughs> French horn. <laughs> 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 
Uh, <laughs> yes, this is this must be the. Uh, and, uh, I love it! I love it! I love it! Hey, can I can I say one more thing? Since sure. we're all screwed up anyway, uh, I mean, <laughs> I mean the mechanics of it. I mean the mecha- I think I understand them because they. I always go through my own head, and it's like, well, okay, so what did I think, and what did that feel like, and what did I do, and da 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 da, right? So I think I get the mechanics. See, we say it was just so traumatic, and that makes it like, oh shit, you know, it was just off the charts, and that's why we, you know, we did that. But the mechanics of it is, during that sort of change, you're just so changed that you can't see it from there. Abuse doesn't look like abuse. You're just so used to it. Someone could say "fuck you" every day, you know, as they leave the house, and you're just so acclimatized to it that it's not abuse. You see what I mean? Yeah. So you can't remember it as something bad if you failed the part back there that registered it as bad. Right. And (laughs) that's actually a really good, good, excellent point. Um, So what triggered her um, feeling she needed to go into the hospital was that the psychiatrist earlier that week, this was on a Friday that I was seeing her, psychiatrist had told her, look, if you don't... You know, bring to the surface that hidden abuse, you are never going to get better. So uh, the, following that encounter with the psychiatrist, she thought about it and said, well, you know, if I'm never going to get better, then what's the point of going on? Uh, and and that's when she came to see me. And so anyway, off she goes to the hospital. And um, three days later, she's, uh, the, Monday, she's back in my my office. So I said, how did the, how did the hospitalization go? And she got very dramatic. She took uh, something out of her purse and she went like this. It was a prescription that the doctor had given her when she was leaving the hospital. Um, I told the doctor in the hospital that I'd been carefully titrated on that particular medication from low dose to full dose. And I was given a good six to eight week trial on it. It had no effect on me whatsoever. So he went ahead and wrote the prescription anyway. So I'm obviously not going to go see the new guy who's in the hospital. And I'm obviously not going to go back to the other guy who told me there's no hope. So what can you do for me? That's when I had my um, OMG moment. Hmm. Primary care, not particularly trained in psychotherapy techniques or anything else. uh, But my intuition kicked in. And I asked her this question. Suppose I had a magic wand. And I waved it, and your depression completely disappeared, completely, totally gone. What disappeared? Your depression. Oh, okay. Lifelong depression. What would you be doing that's different? So she kind of put her head down, said, I have no idea, no idea. She just sat there. I mercifully didn't say a word, which was unusual for me, but there was about 30 seconds of silence, which... And this kind of interaction is actually a pretty long time. So she's looking down, and I'm just waiting, just waiting. And then she says, well, actually, there are a couple of things. One is um, I've been, I, I'm in this totally dead-end job. I mean, I, I hate the people I work for. I have no opportunity to advance. It's a small, isolated location. There's no people around. Uh, and and I, I've been thinking maybe I need to go back to school. That was number one. Number two, um, with this place I work, I have no connection with anyone who I would have any real chance of a relationship with. I mean, I, I just don't like any of them. And if I actually, if the, the men who I work with were the only males left on the planet, I would have no interest in connecting with them at all because they're just jerks. And so I said, well, let's start on the first thing you brought up, um, school. What do you think your next step is? I said, well, I guess I can get some information about the schools. I said, great. Your assignment for next week is to get three, uh, three, this was before the internet. So you had to actually call or go to these places and get, get things by snail mail or pick them up. So I said, why don't you uh, go get, several brochures from local places you might be interested in, bring them in. We can go over them next week. So following week, she comes back into the office. She presents 
three different um, items uh, to me and, and I looked through each brochure and each one looked good. So I said, well, these all look great. Or do any of them stand out? So she points to one of them and says, yeah, this one here, I really like that. So I said, what do you think your next step is? So she actually smiled for the first time. So, well, I guess I could apply. Yes, that sounds like a good plan. So I, so we agreed to stay in touch and um, off she went. And now I hadn't prescribed anything new. I was not treating her <coughs> for her depression. I had, what, what, what I was doing was having her open her mind to what would it look like if she didn't have depression? Uh, and, and she, you know, a bit of time goes by. And um, even though we agreed to stay in touch, I realized I hadn't seen her for a while. So again, another intuitive synchronistic moment, I was thinking, uh, you know, it's time for me to contact her to just make sure everything's going okay. I go to my snail mail box in the clinic and there's a letter from her. Uh, Dear Dr. Khan, just want to let you know what's up. Uh, I applied to that school. I got in. I love it here. I met this guy. We're engaged. I'm not seeing any psychotherapist or psychologist or anything. I'm not on any meds. Happiest I've ever been. Thanks. And that was it. Never saw her again. Uh, and but my sense was, and, and you know. Uh, I mean, my sense was she had solved her own problem. I had done, all I had did was create the possibility in her mind. She had been told she was depressed all her life. She had never really broken out of that. And she, and she was told most recently that there's a good reason for your depression that you aren't going to find. And she just made all of that irrelevant by acting in as if she wasn't depressed anymore. And her life turned around and she did it. Yeah, I had some intuition. Yeah, I pointed her in the right direction. Uh, but she she was the one who did the work. And uh, and that was bit and and basically I think she would have done the work um even if she hadn't gone into the hospital if if that wasn't where she was headed. If she just came in and said I have a lifelong history of depression and I don't know where to go with it. Um Randy uh, did you have anything you wanted to ask Henry regarding uh, healing, like physical healing? Come on in if you do. Angela, did you have anything? Um, Henry, um, we need to talk. I have an idea. I have an idea how things could be become much easier for you, I think, in terms of on the coaching side. Um, so yeah, we need to talk. Um, Henry, <laughs> and Henry, um, there's uh, arthritis. Do you have anything, any stories, any um, advice on self healing? Um, Insight. Yeah, I, the, the uh, what I have found as I've done my uh, journey through self personal development is that. Uh, the power of our mind is is vast, uh, largely untapped, and I've seen people go into remission um, by by deeper states of meditation, by um, not fighting the pain, but but just acknowledging that it's there, and uh, having a communication, whatever that means, with that part of the body. So it's not denial. It's not fighting. Right. It's, it's like our, our fight, flight, or freeze response was designed to help us survive external dangers in our life. Mm -hmm. So a saber-toothed cat shows up in the, in the camp, or stampeding mammoths are coming, and uh, we've got to get out of the way or, or hide or, or trap them in a canyon so we can eat one of them for <clears throat> lots of dinners. Um, and there's also the association with childhood uh, memories, what we grew up uh, with where we may have seen a, a parent struggling with it themselves and their own personal reaction to that pain is now in our memory field. So we're reacting on someone else's reaction. Correct. Yes, Angie. So we need to unlearn. <laughs> um, Go, Angie. Sorry. Um, 
I don't know. I don't have arthritis. I do have a friend who has arthritis. Um, one thing I was going to say, though, is some different things like that. Um, I've Googled before with um, the Abraham Hicks mm -hmm. and then whatever it is connection. And sometimes what they've said about it, um, I've heard them talk about, I think, heart disease, Alzheimer's. Sometimes what they'll say about a disease can give you some insight if you don't know why you're carrying it. You know what I mean? Because it does connect all back to you and limiting beliefs and yes, that, that carrying it from a parent. And so sometimes reading what they say about a particular disease and the, it's kind of like the type of person that would do it. Why, why you would be using this as a coping method, you know, you know what I mean? But it's a coping method that's so far down there. It's not like you're going, Oh, I'm going to do this because it will, you know, it's like that Gabriel method with the um, protecting yourself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Where if you've been abused and getting larger or getting faster, depending on what you need to protect yourself. Right. Well, and that, and that, that, and it's a lot of what this energy medicine approach is about is, is releasing uh, in mm -hmm. some ways. It, it doesn't matter exactly what the reason was. Maybe there were multiple reasons. Maybe there is a hidden abuse. Maybe there is something. Uh, maybe it's a past life thing. Uh, if I if you told me I was going to be having this conversation a few years ago, I would have said, you're crazy. This is totally nonsense. Totally me too. <laughs> totally me too. <laughs> but I've seen enough and read enough uh, out in the medical literature. There's good reports about four to 5,000 spontaneous remissions from all sorts of hideous diseases <clears throat> that, uh, that are well-written and believable. And I, and I, and I do believe that we actually have the power to, uh, to heal ourselves um, physically as well as emotionally. And, and, and a lot of it involves go of what, whatever the story might be or uh, uh and 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 the steps to do that that's that's what i'm most interested in is figuring out what those steps are so that pretty much anybody can heal themselves but but a lot of it comes from uh going into deeper visualization states and meditation states hypnosis too right when i am self-hypnosis or or external Guided. hypnosis but but the idea is as I was starting to say, the those mechanisms, fight, flight, or freeze, saved our species. That's why there are over seven billion of us now on the planet, and we're pretty pretty puny animals when it comes to, you know, armor on our bodies or or uh, claws or fierceness or poison in our poison glands, like you know snakes and whatnot. We don't have those physical properties to protect ourselves but we have our minds and right and i i feel that a lot of us go unconscious and go into those reactions of that fight flight or freeze and it's just becoming conscious and aware is a great start would you would you agree absolutely, absolutely. <clears throat> yeah so so if, if it doesn't so what happened it's one of the more interesting paradoxes if you if you're having trouble sleeping and you just get into one of these, oh no, I got to sleep. I've got this big meeting tomorrow. I've got my whole life is going to fall apart if I can't get to sleep. I got to get to sleep. And you're forcing yourself to try to get to sleep. What happens? Do you sleep? No, you're no. waking yourself up in, and now you're all agitated and your brain is in full, starting to get into fight, flight, or freeze mode because you're looking at that as some sort of threat to you. Um, but sometimes just accepting, well, you know, I guess, uh, I'd like to sleep, but maybe all I'm going to do tonight is rest my body. So I'm just going to go into a kind of a relaxed state and kind of try to rec you know, let go of the tension in my body and imagine it going away. And I'm not going to worry about it because, you know, I've had trouble sleeping lots and I've made it through the day the next day. And sometimes just letting go, you actually, um, uh, it, you actually fall asleep. Well, it, it it's. I'm, I'm not going to say that chronic uh, arthritis is going to go away that easily, but, but for the stories that I've seen and heard and heard people talk about, uh, the, instead of going in and feeling the pain and wanting to fight it, 
or deny it's there or pretend it's not there. It's more about going in as the observer. Go in and you just observe the pain and you be with the pain and you ask the pain, what is the lesson I need to learn here? And just let it answer. Yes. Um, he's, Nelsie, you going to touch the question? No, would you do it? Would you do okay, it? Um, he'd like to know what your take is on color therapy, um, chakras, and touch therapy as well. Uh, well, first of all, it's really interesting you should ask because I just started looking at color therapy uh, uh, the other day. I was um, actually, I think Elsie asked me the question, what are flow states? And I Googled, uh, how, how can you get flow states? And there's a woman out there uh, who actually is a flow expert and her ex area of expertise is specifically color therapy. And uh, uh, I might even be able to find her name on my iPad if it's okay for me to look. It's funny, Henry, because in the mastermind call, when you were talking about her, and I was telling you the story about when I got my um, divorce and red and how red became so prominent and what um, red meant on her thing. It was fascinating. And then when we were talking and, and I realized that the last three driver's license pictures before this one, I was wearing a just red sweatshirt, nothing on it, just red. <laughs> so it, it is really interesting. I mean, I, so I, I want to study the color therapy um, because there seems to be something there to me. There really does. <laughs> Yeah, well, to, her, her, her name is, um, uh, her program that she has is called Creative Flow State Training, and her name is Leanne Venier, uh, spelled L-E-A-N-N-E, -E. last name is V as in Victor, E-N-I-E-R, and she has, if you go to her website, uh, she's, I think she calls it the uh, Catalytic Color, the Science of Color, Light, and Flow. And it's really pretty interesting to, to just look over that. There's, the, I, I'm actually uh, a believer in, in all that you're mentioning about color therapy, chakras, touch therapy. Uh, I, that's where I've seen relief from symptoms, but I've also seen more profound cases of relief where people actually let go somehow uh, I wish I knew that the, the five steps you absolutely needed to take that it would really work. A lot of it, though, is, is the letting go process. The energy, it's a, one of the theories of disease that comes from Eastern medicine is that we have energy that flows naturally through our body. And when that energy gets blocked, it causes damage. So if it's blocked somehow in your joints, if it's not flowing through your joints, but it's stuck, then you self-destruct and you're, you're doing, you're damaging your joints. If it's, uh, gets stock stopped in the heart, uh, you can develop heart disease or, or abdominal troubles or obesity problems are all about flow, not happening adequately. So all of the modalities, Qi, uh, Qigong is also a modality that it is, I, I, I have a friend who's a Qigong healer and I have seen him heal people before my eyes. Uh, and, and it's, really dramatic <clears throat> do you have his contact info that he would want to share for anyone that views this um i let me see if i yes i do uh with his permission of course right well i haven't asked him for permission <laughs> but i but i think uh people could probably send him an email and uh let me see if i can get that and and while he's looking for that uh angie you said mm -hmm. oh i ha i have an insomnia tip um i <laughs> It's funny. I think 2015 was actually a very, very kind year to me. I learned a lot of things. And one of the things I learned, I think that was another Abraham Hicks thing, is that falling asleep, it's a natural behavior. You're supposed to be able to do that just like you breathe. You don't have to sit here and say, breathe. Oh, my God. Oh, for, I forgot to tell myself to breathe. Oh, I forgot. You know, it's not something you need to try to do. And it's your act of trying to do it that's actually keeping it from you. So I take just comfort in the fact that I don't have to do anything. And then I find an activity. And this is the part that takes a little bit of trial and error. But you need an activity where you will both be you know, reclined in a, in a reposed, I can fall asleep right now sort of way. Right. But where... 
you're not really focused on anything. TV is good. I know a lot of people say bad stuff about electronics. TV actually works for me. Mm-hmm. Facebook actually works for me. Something very limited. So that you're not thinking about it anymore. Your goal is not to think about the fact I need to get to sleep. Is that letting go? Right. And, and try to do it. Your tr- goal is to let go. Letting go and again. Then, mm-hmm. and, and prior to letting go, remember your body's got this one i mean there's a lot of stuff that it's protecting you against your best interest but this one it actually can do it just let it mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah and I, I mean i again it's it's one of those things where uh, i mean i spent a whole i spent a 40-year career at the university of california san francisco connected to a teaching there i still do some teaching uh but the Western medicine view is such a uh, rigid, limited, you know, we can give you really strong anti-inflammatory drugs that will stop your arthritis, but it might, by the way, um, have so many other side effects. We don't want to talk about them because you won't take the drug if you really knew how bad they were. Uh, and they're wonder drugs for some people, and I don't want to put, put it down or tell people don't, don't take your medicines anymore. But what I do want to say is all these other modalities are extraordinary and some of it is about something happens they let go they have gratitude uh they they feel like it's already happened they go around telling people i i just had this amazing thing happen to me i did this meditation i maybe did color chakra work i did uh visualizations and one day i got up and and my arthritis was almost totally gone. I kept doing it, and now it's not there anymore, and I'm walking when I couldn't. And all these stories about people who haven't walked for years who get up and walk uh, are, are stories that are believable in, in many cases. So, yes. Um, that's part of why I was showing the coffee cup. I think it comes down to personal responsibility. Or, or you know, you're here, and and for all intents and purposes, you're really here alone, right? We're all here, but you're, you're here. You're here representing you. You're taking care of you, right? So let's say the example, the insomnia example is the same thing as the arthritis, right? Okay, we have, um, we have something we don't find is optimal. We don't want to call it a problem or anything, but we have something that isn't really behaving optimally for us and we want to change it, right? So we change that attitude, but let's say, okay, I can let go of, I don't need to try to sleep. It's something that comes naturally to me. So I just let it happen and I find a way to let it go. But your body does have some physical realities. So if I've had coffee or certain other things, um, I'm real bad if I have chocolate or coffee after say, I haven't gotten it past um, I'd where it is between five and eight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Certainly after eight, I'm, I'm in a bad way. Mm. <laughs> But early, you know, I don't know. But so if you've done certain like things like that, it will um, interact so that you, the methodology of understanding, letting go, you've now put like an interrupter in there in your body that's going to fight it. And I'm sure you do that with arthritis, with cancer, with all of them. (laughs) Exactly. Yes. I, I, I completely um, agree with that. And I, uh, it, it, you know, it, it letting go sounds like it should be easy. It, it uh, we all have habits that are uh, built into our subconscious. Uh, it's the good news is that uh, even if I haven't been on a bicycle for a few years, if you put me on a bicycle, I'll know how to ride. Uh, I don't have to think about every step that I had to think about when I get in the car and get it moving, uh, like I did when I was first learning. We all automate all that, and it's a wonderful mechanism that our organism has to um, simplify our lives but the problem is we also automate our our physical response to life circumstances or to illnesses uh, that may not be productive Uh, so that is why what you're saying makes a lot of sense we have to let go yes um Randy has down here, he says, color chakras have a rotational direction. When there is disturbance in a chakra, it will usually be rotating, rotating in the opposite direction. You know, I, I do, I, one I, more thing, one, 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 one more. He says, I do Remicade infusions now. Okay. Yes. So, so, um, so with regard to, to the Remicade, I, I've worked with some patients who were um, on 
uh, Remicade or similar medications, and I didn't, and I had no intention of having them stop that if they're getting benefit from that. But I also encourage all of the um, alternative medicine approaches because you just might happen to find one, whether it's a Qigong healer in your area that uh, actually can do this work directly. Uh, color, the rotating chakras are really interesting. I, I also visual, I, when I'm in a deeper meditation state, I actually can visualize swirling. I used to think that I had to fix the rotational direction uh, until I, um, it was a, one of the Jeffrey Allen uh, programs uh, on, on energy uh, healing. Uh, he's on uh, Mind Valley Academy where he d- diagrammed um, the, the sort of an infinity shaped energy field that goes through each chakra. And he's, he, con- somebody asked him a, a, about rotational direction that they're visualizing. He said, first of all, you know, it's, it's really interesting when you do that, it's not necessary to understand them. And sometimes it goes one way and sometimes it goes the other. And it might possibly be w- because of which side you're looking at it. So if you're looking at it from the back, it'll go one way. And the same energy flow looked at from the front will go the other way. And it doesn't really matter. Uh, So that was his take on rotational. Uh, But I also have heard people say if if they're associating this rotational direction with a flare up, uh, they have in their minds the ability then to flip it the other way. And they actually can imagine the spinning, reversing the spin. And for some people, that gives some relief. Mm. Angie? Um, He says clockwise from the front is what I was taught. Um, What I would say personally, the most important thing, and only you can really know if you're doing this, right? Other people can look from outside you and see your success or supposed failure and anything, and only you can know. But it's that attitude. If you are trying something and you're telling yourself this will work for other people but not for me in any way shape or form it is not going to work for you you have to get to the place where you say okay i've had this problem but at any time this can actually go away and that can happen for me you want to get even from there to where you know okay i'm still taking this medicine it won't hurt anything right but i don't really need this anymore I'm fine. Get there and you're going to might be maybe find out you don't need that medicine anymore. I mean, that's basically on my end what I did on the no pain recovery. Right. Uh, let, let me if is it, all attitude. Do we have time for another story? Because this actually came. Ab- out of, absolutely. This is the specific um, pain story. It was not my patient, but I um, actually saw a video uh, a, a PBS presentation a number of years ago. Um, it was on visualization, and uh, they there was a patient who had very severe metastatic cancer pain that was basically unresponsive to all the pain medicines. So um, the researchers at Langley Porter at UCSF uh, psychiatric uh, program uh, connected him to a functional MRI scanner. And they were able to see different patterns of the pain um, in this scanner that were reproducible. So when his pain was 10 out of 10, the worst ever, he had one pattern in his functional MRI study. Then when it was 5 out of 10, um, still bad, but less so, they had a different pattern. There was a a third pattern that that, uh, showed 1 out of 10 pain when it wasn't so bad. Uh, And then there was also a pattern when he didn't have those rare moments when he had no pain. So they mapped those pain uh, signatures to a, just a simple animation video of a campfire. So 10 out of 10 was mapped to raging fire shooting way up. Uh, Five out of 10 was just sort of an ordinary level fire that was, uh, you know, medium. One out of 10 was just glowing embers and zero was, flame out you know no glow at all and they taught the guy to begin to associate so instead of freaking out about the pain he was looking forward to the he invited the pain to come in so he could imagine 
that okay this is i'm seeing the campfire 10 out of 10 and raging fire way up here or when it was at five he was able to see it he was able to actually see all the intervals coming down and then and then all the way to out and then he was able to train himself just visually so he'd get hit with 10 out of 10 pain he'd immediately in his mind see the campfire way up here he would imagine the campfire going down and he would bring it down to zero and the pain would be gone just with his mind. Sure. So I, I, I hear those stories and what I, um, you know, encourage would encourage uh, Randy to do is um, keep taking your meds, let your uh, rheumatologist, uh, you know, deal with that anti-inflammatory, but also start communicating with your body. What do you need? What, what can I do to help here? Give me some clues and let's follow a pathway with, with maybe there is a color chakra that will, uh, or, a, or a color that, that I will feel a certain way when I'm in, in this place of that color. Uh, it's, it's not going to hurt. Uh, it will make the, the medicines more effective, but it also may render the medicines unnecessary at a certain point. Yeah, but the final thing I'll also mention is that Joe Dispenza, the chiropractor, uh, has a course on um, uh, making your mind matter. It's uh, it's available on Hay House. He actually uh, had a very serious injury early in his career where he, he had uh, multiple spine fractures after a car accident. Uh, he was riding a bicycle and was struck. Um, and he was told he'd never walk again because he had fractured spine that was uh, pushing on his spinal cord. And he, and he was basically told by multiple people, there is no way this is going to heal without very drastic uh, spinal, total spine fusion with metal rods. And he just said, well, there's no way I'm going to do that. And uh, so face down in a total body cast for 10 weeks, he meditated to the point where he got deep enough to that no mind, no place, no time, uh, deep, quiet meditation. And then from there sent the intention that he was going to, that the cells in his body were going to heal this spine. And with his mind, he healed. Ten weeks later, he got up and walked and his spine was completely healed. No surgery. Uh, and he now gives talks on how to do that. And he has workshops as well. So uh, another thing that might help uh, would, uh, would be to, to consider go at least doing the, some of that work as well. I'm amazed. Cool. Um, and also Henry, before we go, uh, I think uh, we were talking about you had an offer. Is there still an offer for your coaching? Oh, um, yeah. I the, the, I did two coach trainings. One was um, through a program called Achieve Today. Uh, and that, I would say, there's a lot of crossover between the two programs. It turns out the head guy at that coaching program also took the other coaching program. The, the, the second one was High Performance Academy. Uh, a high performance uh, coaching. Uh, the the offer that I have is um, a limited time only. Uh, I have about eight tickets to a Brendan Burchard event um, that happens at the end of February, last weekend of February. Of uh, it's a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, four day event, <laughs> San Diego. And if you went online to buy the tickets, it would cost, you'd have to sign up for about $997 and, uh, and you get, you get two tickets. <laughs> um, but I, but, uh, if people are interested and actually want, um, to, uh, have a, a strategy session to see what the problems are and see if you're interested and want to sign up, uh, I've got eight to give out and I have to give them out pretty soon because time is running out. Uh, so what do they do to do that, Henry? Well, I guess uh, they can contact me if they're interested in, in a strategy session just to see if it would be right for them. And then, uh, and if they want to sign up, we can talk about the logistics of that. And, and at, at sign up, I would 
uh, give them the link to get the ticket. So uh, the idea here is not to get a, a ticket to Brendan. I mean, that, the, it's a nice bonus, uh, but the idea is to explore some of the areas that might be limiting you to bring your performance up to a higher level. Okay. So will you, um, do you have an, uh, a contact you could give out now for that? It's a free uh, strategy session. Yes. Uh, if, if people want to contact me, you, why don't we use my um, Henry J. Kahn at iCloud.com email. Okay. I'll have that posted at the, at the end of the YouTube version of this um, iCloud. Okay, cool. And, and, and if they're asked, asked for a strategy session, then we could ske schedule something and uh, have it, have it, it's, a, it's basically a free strategy session. Uh, you, it, and then we can go from there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Angie. Um, the stuff you were talking about that I'm doing. Okay. So I have that website that I've been working on, which is part of what I want to talk with Henry about because Henry, you could do things the way I'm doing. So all you need to do is look at the stuff I've been doing lately to see if you like that. And then I can show you how I learned to do as much as I'm doing. And then you just go, Henry, you go. <laughs> um, but <laughs> on mine, um, part of my learning the WordPress, right? Part of how I'm learning to do the WordPress um, site, they make you go through these things. So I hit the newsletter one and I just keep making these damn newsletters. <laughs> um, um, so I have two right now. Um, you can sign up for, um, well, there's a couple different things actually going on. One you um i'm asking for videos i am videos where you announce to the world who i am at the beginning of 2016 right and the best ones i'll put five of them up on my um, website um so, so that's not a big reward but depending on if you like that <laughs> but not, are, they, are they supposed to say who you are or who they themselves are who they themselves are. Um, okay. Somewhere, one of the ads says something about it. you're you're proclaiming who you are. And, where can <laughs> um, and, 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 and in one of the videos, I talk about it too. It's it's like it's quite obvious at this point. I don't know exactly why I'm a vlogger or blogger, but I'm I'm obviously both. I'm doing that and continuing to do that. Whereas on the self, you know, on the coaching, mm -hmm. not so much. <laughs> okay. So, um, so I had one, you know, why did it take me so long to just say, I'm a blogger, right? So that was the idea of, you know, announce, I am, you know, be who you really are. Um, at the same time, I'm starting a um, thing called um, a cheer of the day. And so you can sign up for that. It's not actually running yet because I haven't learned how to, um, I'm beginning to learn how you can make them run, but how you could get them to change and put the content that you want to change. You know what I mean? So I'm working on that part, but once I get that, you know, boom. And all of those, the learning curve is um, chunky and fast. <laughs> you, you know, it's like you learn it, boom. <laughs> and, then, and then you get a little bit of stop. <laughs> um, I can't remember if I have, any, it seems like I have another, do I have another one going, Elsie? It seems like I do. Um, the website, you have a new website. The website, um, yeah, and Angie sees um, the cheerleader of life. Mm -hmm. um, so you can find it just under that. Um, Where can they find the yeah. details of your your? Uh, what do we call these? Doing the video. Um, I I've just been calling um, um blab with and with Elsie and Angie blab with Elsie and Angie because I mean what else are you gonna call it? I mean, and I, I like the way we handle it. I like the way, I love having Henry as a guest. I love having other Yay. guests. But um, having the freedom to talk about um, being very holistic with it, you know what I mean? To talk yeah. about anything that might come up with your clients. Mm -hmm. um, definitely based on what we were trained, but also based on um, what else we've learned with life. I mean, we've all had experiences that expand. That's part of why a different coach or a different guru is, you know, each person needs different ones that's the, it's the whole reason why we used to take photo classes and we'd go to the same stupid little warehouse site or something and they'd set you loose with cameras and you'd be like we're gonna all gonna come back with the same photos yeah. no you don't because you're all different so every life coach brings something different every client brings something different and it's just when you get that um attraction where they mesh and they and and i don't think you can have one of those relationships without both people growing See, that's like how I learned bass. I refused to take bass lessons from a teacher because I was afraid I'd just learn their style. So I went mm -hmm. and learned off my heroes, just learned songs. Mm -hmm. Of course, I can't read music. Well, okay, so <laughs> in hindsight. <laughs> <laughs> I, but I, I think that's probably easy to pick up, the reading yeah. music part. I think yeah. So. 
just just make that a goal for this year um i've got one that i've always wanted to do that scares me from college um i got sick of always getting spanish and yet still in college not meeting the damn language requirement it's like are you kidding me i must have had five years of it at this point so then i took french <gasps> oh <laughs> i had this teacher whose eyes just bugged out of his head and he would yell at you and i and i would say it you know french it kind of with a spanish english accent so it kind of sounded like i was trying for italian and it was horrible and i had this big thing on my wall where it had all the verbs conjugated right but i was still getting a solid d and it was dragging everything down right mm. everything so why that's important is that i have a friend who's living in paris and i have the opportunity to get to stay in a bedroom in paris for free so i have to do it so i'm doing duolingo for um french this year <laughs> and i'm really going to do it <laughs> That's really cool. Hey, Henry, you just got a yeah. really nice thank you. Oh, yay! Um, yeah. So thank oh well, you so I, much. well, thank thank you for uh, giving me that. Thank you. That means a lot. I uh, and I would encourage Super Tech seventy six to keep to look at the clues that are working for you because that's where this is you know headed. Uh, don't don't. Oh, I I have many stories like that one with the suicidal patient um, that, that I just kind of blew off as well as coincidence or I really didn't do anything. I mean, yes, the patient healed themselves, but, but I gave them some direction. But when you are actually working on yourself and you get results that are objective, now you're crossing over into whatever it is you're doing. If you were getting better blood tests off of meds and you were getting on, that's huge. It means that you're on the on a pathway that might one day you might be the one on the internet in a website for uh, people with your kind of inflammatory condition. Is saying here's the step. Here are the five steps I took to cure this myself, and I'm off of meds, and here I am, and 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 I can help you that becomes a really powerful thing that you can do. So uh, I would, I'd encourage people to do that. I wish I had the, 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 the five steps right now that would work well for everybody. But I think that, um, I, I think that, that everybody has this capability. Yes. Yay. Randy. Hi, Randy. <laughs> Hello. I just wanted to have a face to the name. Fantastic. Uh, it's, it's nice to see you. You're you're already doing amazing miraculous things, but because uh, from the Western medicine side, uh, your your room, my guess would be your rheumatologist is freaking out that you stopped the medicines. Um, Maybe. not really. He he kind of had this worried look on his face to start with when I told him I stopped taking, you know, certain ones. Some of it wasn't even related to the rheumatology. It was just, you know, other things like heartburn, uh, stuff that I was taking all the time. And I just got to the point where I says, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to try this every other day instead of every day and saw no difference. And then I just, I ran out of it. So I quit taking it all together and everything was fine. I didn't have heartburn anymore. Yes. And, having been a lifelong heartburn person, I know how um, addictive those medicines are and how hard they are to taper off. I've had patients over the years not able to taper off of them. And, uh, right. And those medicines actually interfere with how your body digests food. It interferes with how your body absorbs nutrients. So in and of themselves, getting off of that is actually huge. So with Right. Yeah. And I've really cut down on my prednisone and you know, a couple other things too. So, you know, I'm, I'm taking better steps and, and uh, I've reduced one of my other meds, like two thirds of what I used to take. So, yeah. So, so the, the mindset to take from that is that what I'm doing is working and, uh, and it's okay to also say part of what I've done is to engage the medical profession. So I'm not doing this alone. They're doing right what they think is their best uh and it's like a team you got doctors prescribing powerful medications uh to bring this under control but you are doing something also on that and give yourself credit for that right i do keep them informed you know when i go in and see them you know well this is what i've done and it seems to be working for me and they verify what verify it with the blood tests and 
you know, all my blood tests were in the normal ranges last time and they've never been that way before. So, right. So that is huge. So I would, you know, and yes, it might be partly medicines that helped with that, but I would also, I would also um, encourage you to take the other side of it, which is I'm doing this. It's my life and I'm taking charge and, uh, and maybe you can try some of the visualization techniques or maybe you'll, uh, connect with, uh, I'll, I'll, I can give you Roland's, I, I should probably contact Roland. Oh, Roland, yeah. How he'd like to be contacted, but I'm sure he'd be interested in helping as well. So, yeah. And I do have to give credit to Elsie who gave me some life coaching sessions and, you know, in the meditations and clearings and stuff like that. I, I strongly believe that that was a part of this too. Uh, getting this all in, in line and, and working well. Elsie and I have ch- traded back and forth our coaching programs with each other, and uh, she's she's r- really great. So uh, mm-hmm. one, of, one of the... No offense, Angela. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a dog from 101 down <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and and, and yeah, both, both of those people are amazing in their own strange way. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Why would I flip off the person who gave me all that applause? I don't understand. He likes <laughs> dogs. <laughs> um, I have a question. Um, all that frivolity. Um, Henry, when you said he could look for clues, is there ways you can explain that more? Um, what sort of clues? Well, the, well, being able to say. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Um, I have the Nemo one myself. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, by the way, we're all supposed to be having fun with this. It's a journey. It's a uh, you know, you know, people, so. Yeah, we get we get kind of serious sometimes. But you're right. You're right. Yeah. It's hard to, it's hard to very, very true. She's our laughter medicine. That's where Angela comes into all of this. <laughs> it's absolutely true. Mm-hmm. Today, just in case it was gruesome. <laughs> she doesn't even really drink everybody, just so you know. I love this woman. Oh, oh, and I hate tequila. <laughs> Can you tell us why the, the, you're drinking this? Um, is there a worm no, in ha- there? I had it just in case. Um, partly too, it was so that I wouldn't. I, I have this terrible thing. Um, that, remember we were talking before about even when I was at my darkest. Um, I had that nervous laughter and it would bubble yes. out. Well, I'm a, I'm a communicator. So you listen with somebody of Henry. Yes, Henry knows a lot. And it's so hard not to mid-Henry talk, go, but I need to, you know, like the Starship Troopers, but I need to know more. Put a pin right in that place. So it's hard, you know, so the drinking idea was if it was really becoming hard to interrupt, I would make myself take shots. <laughs> very quietly it was also it was this weird place where if it needed the entertainment because yes it does need the entertainment yeah yeah (laughs) and i mean truthfully that's what i'm here for um yes we always want the the comments that henry knows everything and 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 elsie is as beautiful as the universe and angela's the dog because angela can take it bitch I've never laughed so much than since we started blabbing. So. Very, very true. Mm. Very, very true. I have Earlier. seen, I have seen inner light just come outside of you in the past couple months. Just mm-hmm. you are exploding in light. So it's, it's beautiful. I meant to, to actually say that. Yay! Thank you. I'm here. Oh, bye, Randy. Bye, bye, Randy. I was wondering what that was about. I've um, thought about that. This is cheating. There's actually a window up there, so I, there is actually a physical light. But no, I. <laughs> yes, exactly. I, uh, I have a light there. Right. I, I, my my light chair like won't go any further, and if I turn my laptop, I can. There's still a light, so uh, maybe I just have a halo. That's, oh, you do have a little bit of light right on your top of your head, I think. This um, is fascinating so no, but... topics, guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you get people in. Wow, you have light That's on your head. That's how you get people in. <laughs> okay, 
So um, I wanted to ask um, about five minutes ago, if we had any resources on, at the top of our heads that we could send people to on this topic? Which topic? My battery is low, guys. Um, on on self-healing, uh, energy flow, anything that we've been studying? Uh, um, doc, uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza over at, um, what is it? Is it Mind, Mind Valley, Valley or is it? Well, he, oh, no, yeah. he's Hay with House. Hay House now. Hay House. Oh, okay, so yeah, um, yeah. so over at Hay House, you've got Dr. Joe Dispenza, and over at Mind Valley, you've got Jeffrey Allen. Right. I love Jeffrey Allen. I'm studying him right now. Right, and and I I happen to really like Mind Valley Academy because they have so many other programs that get into very deep visualization. Mm -hmm. uh, they get into areas of uh, consciousness engineering and how do you go to the next level of consciousness? Uh, really interesting uh, uh, programs, and uh, you know I I I'm. I, as I've said a few years ago, I would have thought you were crazy if you were describing me of today saying I was into this stuff because I was so typical, hardcore, uh, dogmatic, uh, rigid Western medicine, all of that other stuff, all that meditation stuff, all that stuff. It's just nonsense until I got experienced, it, experienced right? and found that these, these things actually work. And that's what it's now, about. Honestly, we're acting like it's new discoveries. Our ancestors healed with this stuff. That's why mm -hmm. when we're species of tribal humans scattered across the planet, we somehow managed to survive uh, despite the fact that we were not the strongest predator out there until we figured out how to make weapons. But that's a whole other topic. Um, but anyway, we, we have amazing capabilities uh we had shamans and tribes that would guide people but a lot of people did their own healing and that's what i'm convinced is something we've forgotten mm -hmm. and we're bombarded with ads uh, you have a little ache or pain go buy some tylenol or ibuprofen or uh, take a pill uh, why there's something out there for you buy this do that uh well, that's true, but we also have other ways of dealing this with our doing it internally. Angela, no, I was just worried if your battery was going to die. Oh, I came inside <laughs> and I plugged myself. In. Oh, okay, you're good. Okay, no worries. No worries then. Um, yeah, I got nothing. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, you have a halo, you have not only a halo but a, an aura all all around you. Just so you know. oh, I do. Yay! <laughs> but see, that's the light. <laughs> The two of you both have these halos. <laughs> she, she really does. Elsie really does. Oh, I love it. Okay. Well, oh, thanks, do everybody. We, do we have an idea what we're talking about next week? Um, I have a DJ friend who's going to be uh, talking music with us. So he, uh, he likes everything from all, like, 50s, 60s, 70s 80s 90s and now <laughs> so um very cool yeah, very so very cool be prepared to ask anything uh yeah so or i'm <laughs> sorry he's a show host I, I we don't use dj anymore i don't think that word's really around anymore um D dj vj um yeah <laughs> yeah right so on, yeah he's a show host so the really two awesome. are you gonna start singing or the two of you gonna start doing duets not yet. Oh, but we're working on a video. I mean, my husband and I. So we'll have yeah. that. We'll have that. This <laughs> week. That that was scary for a few seconds there, because one, when he said it, I thought he meant us, and so then when you said we're working on a video, it's like, wait a minute, what did I sign up for that <laughs> now that I don't remember? <laughs> what am I doing? Yeah. What, what video? In fact, what video are you on right now, Angela? You're on your um, second batch of. I'm on my second batch, the second 99. Um, I am going to have another one later today because the New Year's one was simply the rocket that I saw last night, which was really fun. I was hoping it would um, be more, but it, mm -hmm. it was what, what it was was absolutely perfect. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I just do them by the date now, and I tend to um, have them each show up on that blog as well. Okay. So Cool. Yay. Well, does anyone have Yay. anything, um, any more questions on self-healing, on life coaching? 
Anybody? Or last words? Last Before words. We... Attitude. 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 I love it. Cool. Well, guys, um, I guess this is it. I'll try to edit all the technical <laughs> issues out and uh, save the sound effects for Angela. And save the sound effects for Angela and, and then, you know, save some of the funny stuff. Yeah. What, what, okay. Did you know what and watch for the things that you didn't see? Because at the very beginning, I gave you a gingerbread moment. <laughs> <laughs> I gave you I gave you the post comment to Christmas. Uh, <laughs> I could try it again, but I don't know if I could do it. Plus, his head's already gone. Yeah. I, bit it. <laughs> <laughs> I bit his head off like that on your camera. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we know what you're drinking. Um, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> there's Just not kidding. no water <laughs> so we'll never see got anything in it <laughs> love it so we'll see everybody next friday i hope we're gonna be talking music it's gonna be super cool That's exciting if, yeah thanks and if it, me, thanks for letting me join your too much fun club henry Kahn, I, thank you well it, it's been a it's been a hey let me do it yay honor, so thank you <laughs> and angie did you have something to add I don't think so. Oh, okay. um, send send an I am video to my um, website, Angie C's um, Cheerleader of Life, um, and sign up for the cheer of the day. Yeah. Maybe you'll be that much more cheerful. Yay! Cool. Works, works for me. Yep. <laughs> and, and fill all, all right. the empty spaces with gratitude. That's also yeah. a good one. Cool. Thanks, guys. Right. Well, <laughs> farewell. Farewell. Have a everyone. great day. Bye, everybody. Well, happy 2016. Bye. Happy 2016. Thanks again, Henry. Bye, Angie. Bye, everybody. Bye.